to begin. It's an honor to be with you. And uh, really brave men and women, the job you do is incredible. And the progress that you've made in the last short period of time has been unbelievable. On April 1st of this year, I announced the launch of a powerful U.S. military and law enforcement operation to combat the flow of illegal drugs across the Western Hemisphere. Today, I'm pleased to be with Admiral Craig Fowler and his team, done an incredible job, at the U.S. Southern Command Headquarters to provide an update on this incredible successful e effort. We're joined by Secretary of Defense Mark Esper. Thank you, Mark. Acting Secretary of Homeland Security Chad Wolf. Chad, thank you, thank you. Commandant of U.S. Coast Guard Admiral Carl Schultz. Admiral. Associate Deputy Attorney General Amanda Liscom. Thank you, thank you, Amanda. Congressman Mario Diaz Balart, who is a friend of mine for a long time. Thank you very much, Mario. Great job you're doing down here. And many, many others, leaders and military geniuses and people that do a fantastic job. In just 12 weeks, Southcom's surge operation conducted with key regional partners has resulted in more than 1,000 arrests and the interdiction of 120 metric tons. Uh, I can only tell you that's a lot of narcotics worth billions and billions of dollars. We're determined to keep dangerous drugs out of the country and away from our children. We're securing our seas. We're securing our borders. This is a new operation, not been done before. And this operation has been incredibly successful. As you know, uh, in the United States, at least before the, the COVID came to us, the flu, the virus, the China virus, whatever you'd like to call it, it's got many different names. But before it hit, we were doing really well, and we're still doing very well, but now we're getting back on track. Last year, 70,000 precious American lives were taken because of the poison the cartels bring into our country. Under my administration, drug overdose deaths fell for the first time in nearly 30 years, and they fell fairly substantially. Unfortunately, the shutdowns caused by the China virus have led to a recent rise in overdose deaths still below the level that they were at, but uh, nevertheless, it went up a little bit. This is one of the reasons that we're working to safely and responsibly reopen our country, reopen our schools, get our country going again 100 percent. We're setting records on jobs. We're setting records on many different things. We're going to have a great third quarter. Third quarter is going to be tremendous numbers, fourth quarter likewise. And next year, economically, will be one of the best years we've ever had. But you'll see the numbers starting to come out really, really high in the third quarter. And you've already seen the record-breaking job numbers. NASDAQ just hit recently uh, about uh, 12 record highs, 12 days record highs. And the other markets are right behind it. They'll be hitting records hopefully very shortly also. That means people have a lot of confidence in what we're doing. With the help of the heroes here at Southcom, Coast Guard, CBP, DEA, and law enforcement will work relentlessly to seize illegal drugs, arrest vile traffickers. The traffickers are truly vile. They're terrible, terrible people, what they do, mostly to women and children, but women. And dismantle criminal cartels who are responsible for the deaths of thousands and thousands of Americans. I'd like now to introduce Secretary Esper to say a few words. Mark, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Thank you. President. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Mark. And good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today to discuss the successes of our enhanced counter-narcotics operations in the Eastern Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean Sea. The Department of Defense began this initiative alongside our interagency inter partners at the President's direction on April 1st as part of our whole of government effort to combat the flow of illicit drugs into our country and to protect the American people. Transnational criminal organizations have destroyed far too many American lives by smuggling heroin, cocaine, fentanyl, and methamphetamines into our country, leading to drug overdoses and addiction in our communities. Moreover, the profits derived from these activities support a range of bad actors, from cartels in Mexico to the illegitimate Maduro regime, which continues to oppress the Venezuelan people. Despite the challenges posed by the coronavirus pandemic, our enhanced counter-narcotics operations have shown great success in countering those threats by disrupting the flow of illicit drugs 
denying our adversaries financial resources and strengthening the capacity of partner countries in the region. Since the end of March, we have employed in the U.S. Southern Command area of responsibility 75 percent more surveillance aircraft and 65 percent more ships than normal for drug interdiction. These additional assets include four Navy destroyers, five Coast Guard cutters, and eight aircraft. Currently, nearly a dozen Navy and Coast Guard ships and over 15 aircraft from across the interagency are supporting our efforts, in addition to security forces deployed to the region. Further, we have successfully engaged and encouraged 22 partner nations to join us in this fight and step up their involvement in drug interdictions. As a result of these enhanced operations, Southcom and our interagency and international partners have disrupted more than 122 metric tons of cocaine, as well as over 18,000 pounds of marijuana. We denied nearly $2 billion in drug profits, increased our targeting of known smuggling, maritime events by 60 percent, and neutralized dozens of members of transnational criminal organizations. These efforts have been critical to saving countless American lives and making our communities healthier, healthier, safer, and stronger. I want to thank the President, President Trump, for his leadership in bringing us together in support of this critical mission. Thank you, sir. And I am grateful for the hard work of our partners, including the U.S. Coast Guard, the Department of Homeland Security, the Drug Enforcement Administration, the Department of Justice, members of the intelligence community, and support from Congress as well. For, for all of their efforts. Together, we will maintain our enhanced presence in the region, keep the pressure on transnational criminal groups, and protect America and our communities from the scourge of illicit drugs. Thank you. Mr. Thank, you Thank you, sir. Mr. President, Secretary Esper, Secretary Wolf, Shipmate Carl Schultz, uh, hometown congressman here, Mario diaz Blart. thank you all uh, for your support on this important mission. This mission is vital to our homeland defense. It truly is. And uh, I'm proud to say the efforts are making a difference, Mr. President, and they're saving lives. Uh, and the team here that's assembled uh, deserves the credit, but the resources that you've ordered have, have made that uh, happen. Other nations have stepped up, Mr. President. Uh, Colombia, for one, have stepped up uh, despite COVID. Uh, U.S. leadership has been a key uh, key piece. Uh, Mr. President, if I would, I just wanted to show a map. I have a little version in front of you. Uh, just orient on the uh, on the hemisphere here, if we could put the map up. So uh, Southcom's uh, responsibility this Western Hemisphere, really, it's our neighborhood. It's, it's so close to home. So what impacts the neighbors really has a high impact on us at home, Mr. President. And uh, that's why this is so important. Uh, there's so much opportunity here. It's our number two trading partner outside of um, Asia. And so trade, economics, uh, and democracy, importantly. And our partner nations are willing. They want to work with us. And we work with uh, partners so from Guatemala on south and out into the Caribbean. But that's under assault, this vicious circle of threats that you see, uh, led by the transnational criminal organizations, about a $90 billion a year enterprise. and. Uh, and it feeds off corruption and now the, the added instability of COVID. But I, as I said, that partners have stepped up despite the COVID, which is a tribute to their, to their uh, security teams. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also another aspect in this neighborhood of ours, uh, and it's uh, you know, what we call a national defense strategy, great power China, uh, competition. So China has certainly uh, looked at this neighborhood as an opportunity for them. And when you think about the proximity of some of their investments, uh, Jamaica and El Salvador, it's just as close to Washington as, as is to Miami is, if you look at comparative distances. Slide, please. But what uh, our citizens want, I know certainly my dad in Western PA who's watching once, is they want to know if we're making a difference. And the numbers, as we've stated, really have. At 15% more disruptions, that's detainees, that's drugs off the street. Yeah. That's at 122 metric tons, Mr. President. And 60% more targeting is a big deal for us because that means we can put more assets on more targets. Uh, and the enemy's uh, seen that. We've gotten uh, information from our intelligence agencies that says the enemy's watched that and they're waiting and they're stockpiling and they're trying to change their tactics. Those additional Navy ships, the AWACS from the Air Force, Oklahoma Guard, MC 12s, uh, DE agents, a whole team effort uh, really as, as we make a difference here. But that 70% partner participation is key, Mr. President. Uh, and I think of it this way, um, you know, on the field to compete when you go to golf or baseball, you want the best players with you. 
and we certainly have those winners with us here today. Just wanted to introduce you to two, Mr. Yes. President. Uh, Brigadier General Juan Carlos Correa, if you'd stand up, General. Uh, President, President Duque has sent us his best and paying for it. So he comes here fully paid by Columbia and he works for me. And it's a recognition that uh, Columbia is with us in, World War, in the Korean War and they're with us today and making a difference. And, and our Brazilian uh, President Bolsonaro, a very new addition to our headquarters, Major General David, one of the sharpest in Brazilian armed forces is uh, in our J5 organization. Again, Brazilian paying for him to come here and work for me to make a difference in security. You know, Brazil's been with us since World War II and our relationship is growing even stronger, Mr. President. And last two points, Mr. President, the tactical end of this fight, and you remember being in Key West at Joint Interagency Task right. Force South, so you rang that bell. Right. And the, the war fighters responsible for that fight, Rear Admiral Doug Fierce at the end, commands GIF South, and Master Chief Henry Ledet is the senior enlisted there. They're the ones that are really day in and day out at the tactical edge of this uh, fight, sir. And I'll tell you what, Mr. President, they're ringing the enemy's bell every day, sir. They seem to be. That's a fantastic job. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Mr. Congressman, would you like to say something? Thank you. Mr. President, nothing, nothing prepared, but, but I, I can tell you in my time of Congress, which is now eight, almost 18 years, this region has frankly been looked over, I just uh, barely any attention paid uh, to it. And sometimes when attention was paid, uh, bad things were done. Uh, I will tell you that your administration uh, has emphasized freedom. I want to thank you, by the way, on a personal note, uh, a little bit of a more parochial note, for your emphasis on helping the people of Venezuela regain their freedom, helping the people of Nicaragua regain their freedom.
also is really at your direction. We're not only seeing uh, targets at drug cartels, we're also seeing rogue nation states and politicians that support them. We, we talked about the Department of Justice's recent indictment of Nicolas Maduro and 14 of his cronies that proved to the world that everyone involved in drug smuggling will be held accountable. And I really think that that uh, sends an example to all uh, that whether, again, you're a drug cartel, you're a DTO, or you're uh, a rogue nation state, we're coming after you. So again, thank you for your support. You and I think actions speak louder than words in this case. Thank you, Chad. And uh, the wall is coming along very well. Chad is responsible for supervising that, along with the Army Corps of, the, of Engineers, who have been fantastic. And uh, Mark Esper, that's been really one of your pet projects. And it's been going along up to 250 miles. And that's real wall. That's a uh, wall that you don't get through. It's uh, tough stuff built to the highest standard, built to everything that Border Patrol wanted. They all sat down and they designed right. their perfect wall, and then we said, let's build it that way. And uh, we're up to 250 miles by the end of the year. We'll be up to 450 or so, and we'll have it finished very shortly thereafter, and it's made a tremendous difference because your numbers on the southern border are very, very small coming through. And especially with COVID, that turned out to be very lucky for us that we had the wall or we would have been inundated because they do have some big problems. I would, was with a great gentleman, the president of Mexico, two days ago. We had a long talk about the southern border in Mexico, and they've had some difficulty, but he's doing a fantastic job as president. But the wall is very exciting, and we'll have that opened uh, relatively very, very shortly. And that was despite all odds, I would say, Mark, would you say? That was despite all our odds. We had a, a certain party that was against it. They're not against it anymore, you know. In the end, they just raised their hand. They said, we don't want to take this on because politically, it turned out to be uh, as good as we always do. You know, two things never change, walls and wheels. You know, the wheel will never change. You know, they were talking about technology. Technology is no good without the wall. And, uh, but it's uh, something that I've heard for a long time. Two things you will never change in a thousand years from now, a wheel and a wall. They work, and this wall has really been unbelievable the way it's worked. So great job, and let's get it finished. And uh, tremendous numbers on the southern border, very few people coming in. Appreciate it. And we've made a lot of legal changes, too. It makes it a lot easier for you. Robert, please. Mr. President, thank you. Uh, I want to take folks back to April 1st as the COVID crisis was breaking uh, and all attention was focused on it. The President had the foresight uh, to launch an enhanced operations to disrupt the flow of dangerous drugs to the United States from narco terrorists. Our adversaries believe that the United States would be distracted, but Mr. President, you weren't distracted. I think you remember you sent uh, Secretary Wolf and Admiral Schultz, Secretary Esper, Attorney General of Army out to make the announcement uh, on this operation. Uh, the traffickers use their funds uh, for nefarious purposes, among them to finance the regime of Nicolas Maduro, the illegitimate regime in Venezuela. And for years, Venezuela has flooded the United States with cocaine, which poisons our communities, and it fuels a famous epidemic of addiction that threatens the safety and security of all Americans. The situation in Venezuela has gotten so bad that earlier this week, Admiral Fowler, Fowler uh, called Venezuela a paradise for drug traffickers who enjoy the support and cooperation of the Maduro regime uh, and his allies. Now, to crack down on the uh, the traffickers, President Trump deployed additional ships, aircraft, security forces, he heard about. But the other thing that he did, which is, is less focused on, is he rallied our 22 nation coalition partnership to help in this effort to interdict drugs. Uh, so that fight includes, uh, as you've heard, Colombia, Ecuador, Honduras, El Salvador. On the flight down from Air Force One, Mr. President, I told you I was on the phone with my counterpart in the Netherlands, the Dutch National Security Advisor. They've been part of this coalition fight, and, and they're, they're very proud to be partnered up with Customs and Border Patrol, DEA, the Coast Guard, our military, uh, working the Caribbean and the Eastern uh, uh, Pacific, uh, where, they had, where we've all had a huge effect. Uh, in addition to this operation, the Colombian-led Operation Orion 5, in partnership with the United States, has disrupted or seized approximately 50 additional metric tons of cocaine that would have otherwise come into our country, Mr. President. Uh, so President Trump has been resolute in his commitment to protecting the American people from the scourge of narco-terrorists and traffickers. Uh, our military deployments in the Caribbean and in the Eastern Pacific will endure. Those profiting from illicit drugs and the destruction of our communities will be brought to justice. Uh, the United States will continue its maximum pressure campaign on the Maduro regime, which has a criminal hold over Venezuela. 
And, and, and I can tell for the, for the Venezuelan people, uh, when I speak with President Trump, he asks almost every day, how are things going in Venezuela? What can we do to help the Venezuelan people? This operation is part of that effort. Venezuela is a narco state led by a corrupt criminal illegitimate regime, and the people of Venezuela are suffering because of Maduro. Uh, Mr. President, uh, you've been committed to cutting off his financial lifelines, identifying ways to continue to support the Venezuelan people and ensure the unfettered flow of humanitarian aid to those same people that are suffering. So for those of you in Venezuela, I can, I can let you know that President Trump continues to stand with you. He stands with interim President Guaido, the democratically elected National Assembly, uh, and, and all the people that are fighting for their freedom and their basic human rights and a restoration of democracy and the rule of law in Venezuela. President Trump's fight against drugs and narco trafficking in the Caribbean and in the Eastern Pacific are good for the United States of America. They're good for the people of the region, including Venezuela, uh, but they're also good for the entire world. So, Mr. President, it's an honor to, to serve with you in this, in this effort. Uh, thank you for all that you're doing, sir. Thank you very much, Robert. James, please. Uh, President Trump, as your principal drug advisor, thank you for your commitment and your leadership on the drug issue. I echo your thanks to the men and women who wear a uniform, whether it's the military or whether it's our state and local law enforcement partners who are stopping these deadly drugs from entering our country and thus saving American lives. You laid out a comprehensive strategy to prevent drug use before it starts, to get more people into treatment, and importantly, as we're talking about today, to stop these drugs from coming into our homeland. At your direction, we've implemented a whole government approach. We've made record investments, and we're taking real action, which meant you have received, and more importantly, the American people have received real progress. We must recognize these drug cartels are trying to take advantage of the pandemic, and you are not letting that happen. You are making certain that those people who are suffering and risk death are making sure that we are taking the steps necessary to protect them. That's why your leadership in this step is so important. You're sending a clear message that this administration, that this country will not let up in our fight against drug traffickers. You're doing it also with our international partners. For the first time, Colombia, I recognize the work done there, they eradicated 13,000 hectares of cocaine in one month, last month in June, and that is before they begin the aerial eradication that we have talked about so often. We cannot let these drug traffickers take advantage, especially these cocaine traffickers that are coming up through this AOR. The surge operations are effective and they're going to continue. And we are going to take the fight to these drug traffickers. You have relentlessly committed to the American people by making investments of $36 billion for both the military fight, our law enforcement fight, as well as treatment. And of course, one of the signature programs of the First Lady, something that's really been led by Kellyanne Conway, of speaking to the American people about the dangers of drug use, the media campaigns that she and the First Lady have done have really made a huge difference in what has happened. And so I'm very appreciative to be a colleague of hers. We rely on Admiral Fowler, Admiral Schultz, Admiral Fears, and Master Chief Audet as the ones who are out there actually taking the risks, taking the dangers for the American people. We appreciate what you all are doing, and we urge you to continue to be relentless. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Douglas and Henry, if you'd like to say something, go ahead. Absolutely. Would you like to start? Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I uh, appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I'm proudly serving at Giada South, and I'll tell you, our, our, work, our workforce is static about the assets that are uh, coming down into our theater. Uh, our morale is very high. Good. Um, our, our workforce is working relentlessly, as you said, sir, uh, to make sure that we are building our immune system and keeping it good so we can work throughout this COVID crisis. Um, they're doing it through great sacrifice to their families at times, but they do it because they believe in the mission that we're doing, and we want to stop these transnational. So you're working on your immune system. Yes, sir. That's an interesting one. Not too many people have heard that one. I like that. What do you do for your immune system? We got to make sure. Stay that, in shape. Absolutely, sir. Working out, hydrating, proper That's nutrition, uh, and, and staying safe on our. I'm going to have to start doing that. I think. That's a good idea. Yes, sir. <laughs> You know, and, and we're doing it, and we're proud to do it. Thank you That's so great. much for your support yeah, down great. here. And then lastly, I'd tell you, uh, our men and women in the military really appreciate the 3.1% pay raise you gave us this year. Uh, it means a lot to our men and women who work hard and go in uh, harm's way uh, all across the globe. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you.
Well, thank you and Mario. Obviously, uh, had a good immune system because you recovered. Uh, wasn't pleasant, but you uh, you got there, right? I don't recommend that as a dietary. No, it's not, good. <laughs> it's not good. But you did a good job. Thank, and by the way, thank you for your kind multiple calls while I was uh, absolutely. Well, you've been my you. friend. Thank you very much, Drew. Please, sir. Uh, thank you for coming down today as your tactical commander down the uh, the edge of this operation. Um, I've been in this mission space for over 30 years. I've never seen this many resources applied uh, to the to the problems that are transnational criminal organization counter-narcotics operations. So uh, we have under our roof uh, 21 different countries represented by their foreign liaison officers. Uh, they work, they come to work every day trying to lean into this problem set. We've got uh, a whole of government from the U.S. government uh, with a completely uh, joint force from all the branches of the service as well as all of our interagency partners uh, from all the departments and agencies and, and beyond what's represented in this room. Uh, and so we're just grateful for the opportunity to lean into the problem. And I can tell you uh, with surety that, uh, that we're targeting and we're getting after this every single day. So uh, thank you for your time, sir, and the resources. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Listen, we have the best equipment that we've ever had as a military. We spent two and a half trillion dollars on our military. And some of it's arriving, some of it's coming in, but much of it's here. So when you say uh, the quality of equipment, we definitely have the best equipment we've ever had. We have the best equipment anyone has as a military. We have things under construction that uh, we're going to take a look at one day soon, where we have missiles that go, I hear, 17 times faster than any other missile, and uh, the normal type, at least. And uh, it's something that nobody has anywhere in the world, 17 times faster. So it's a little hard to spot it when it goes that fast, because by the time you spot it, it's gone. Uh, but we have things happening that uh, nobody has even thought about. So thank you very much. You've done a fantastic job. You've all done a really fantastic job, and it's an honor to be here. I want to thank all of the folks behind me, too. I don't want to be rude. You're more important than all of us, right? <laughs> but uh, I want to thank you all very much. Great job. Doing a great job. Great to work with you and your viewers. And say hello. Help me get well fast, right? Great man. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Admiral, it's yours. Mr. President, thank you for the, the time and the attention and the resources. And uh, we're, we're going to stay at this mission. It's, it's a 24-7, it's a and we are going to take a fight to the enemy. And leadership here is committed to the American people. Uh, we owe it to our, our, our for the future. And uh, thank you. You've done a great job. Thank you very much. Thank you, Admiral. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.